The Michigan Science Center is launching a new project aimed at getting more girls and young women interested in science, technology, engineering, and math. These subjects are referred to as STEM, and the Science Center is hoping to encourage the next generation of STEMinistas. The program focuses on increasing interest, confidence, and skill sets in STEM. It's for girls in fourth through eighth grade and will begin in January. Joining me now to talk about the project is the president and CEO of the Michigan Science Center, Dr. Tanya Matthews. Welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so I've got a I've got a daughter yes. who is right in that uh, age group mm -hmm. that you are that you are targeting. She showed me the other day a video that uh, she had produced coding, uh, a little thing where she had a, a little animated cat dancing right. around on right. different sets and asking questions and depending on what you gave the answer, something different happened on the screen. Wow. I was blown away. Okay. But this is exactly mm -hmm. the, the, the sort of sweet spot that you guys are Absolutely. Aiming at. This is what you want. You want little girls to start thinking that mm -hmm. way. Uh, because it can lead to a great career. Absolutely. I think the key to all of this is remembering that girls are actually good at this. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. these are still the grades where the girls are tops of their class in math and science. Better than the boys, better, in fact. Yes, right? yes, better. And that, and that switches <laughs> at some point, and, and we don't does. really know all the reasons why. We can talk about right. some we don't, of them. We don't know all the reasons why. It is definitely, in general, uh, between sort of sixth and eighth grade, is everyone's beginning to lose interest and the, the girls are losing interest faster. That can be everything from implicit bias to boring textbooks to lack of role models to lack of exposure. All of these different kinds of things are playing. Uh, but it's definitely affecting young ladies more. Um, and as you continue up the pipeline, the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller until you get to what some may refer to as an innovation gap, yeah. right, in the workforce where you just don't have um, enough young ladies continuing on that path. Uh, even when uh, young ladies are graduating with these STEM degrees, right? Yeah. They're graduating with sometimes as much as 40%, right. depending on the subject, and it's something less than 20% who uh, are continuing the careers. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and so your program is, is aimed at trying to get them to think yes. longer term about these uh, yeah. about these questions. What, what are some of the things that, that you're gonna do? Yeah, so thinking longer term um, and answering the question why. Young ladies always want to know why. What can I do with this? I already have plans to save the world. I can tell you about my plans <laughs> to save the world. Does this fit? It's why we see more young women in things like uh, the biosciences and right. environmental sciences. So really talking about STEM and creating activities like that. So we recently tested uh, an overnight girls hackathon. Okay, right? there you they, go. they loved it, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, but and part of that was they were designing apps or games to do their own thing. Right. This is what I want an app to do. Of course, we've got the coding classes. Um, we will have a uh, Sue the Tyrannosaurus Rex um, <laughs> at the Science Center. So hey, it's a dinosaur. It's named after a girl. It was right. discovered by a girl. So really getting into that why, uh, letting them get their hands on things yeah, yeah. dirty in a right. technical kind sure. of kind of sense. Really just sort of uh, hits that inspiration. Well, and it's it's seeing themselves yes. in what they're what they're supposed to be sort of learning or thinking about. Right. And that's difficult still because as you as you point out, there aren't as many role models as there should be. There aren't right. a lot of you know, people still hold back, I feel like, in, mm -hmm. in, in, from pushing girls in that direction. Yeah, you make a good point in terms of uh, they're not necessarily a lot of role models, or at least are visible. So one of the major components of the program is a role model and mentor database. Yeah, yeah. We are actively collecting grown-up STEMinistas, who, by the way, love the name as much <laughs> as the 12-year-old girls yeah, right? do. Um, and we're collecting them in a database, but not just their name and what they do, but their story, why they do, how they got there, with the goal being that we've got this giant database of all these women doing these different kinds of things, and young ladies can find themselves, uh, and we'll have uh, lots of examples of the different kinds of things that, that they can do. Yeah. Uh, you talk about the Michigan Science Center. Mm -hmm. It's now the Michigan Science Center. Yes. Uh, but, but it's still located in Detroit. Absolutely. And this gap in communities like Detroit, in minority communities, right. is, 
is bigger, right? It, it is, is bigger. a bigger challenge. Mm -hmm. It is bigger. Um, and one of the interesting things, though, is looking at different communities, think about what matters, what, what's important to them. One of the things that pushed me on this side, I am actually a steminista, so uh -huh. my, my degree is <laughs> right. in engineering. A doctor, right? I called you and, doctor. Right? And, and I have some of these same stories. But one of the things uh, that I like about this is that STEM is potentially a poverty game changer, yes. right? And so young ladies in these communities are exceptionally motivated by practicality. Listen, yeah. at the end of the day, I'd like to save the world, but I also need a job because I may have to save my family. Uh, right, right. This and is a this is a career. That's it's a, pay it's me a career pretty well. choice that has, as we've been talking about, multiple entry points. Yeah. It's got entry points after high school. It's got entry points after two-year degrees. It's got entry points after vocational. Or if you want to do like me and stick your daddy for the ten-year bill, <laughs> it's got all these right. these different sort of um, entry points. And I think that uh, it gives kind of a practical appeal. And Frankly, I think um, our young ladies who are growing up in certain environments probably have better problem solving yeah. um, well, skills. Sure it's do, a right? really interesting, creative approaches to getting things done, yeah. which are really beneficial in STEM. So, so tell me about your story. Yeah. Uh, as I said, you're you're a doctor. Mm -hmm. You are uh, very very well educated in <laughs> STEM uh, in the STEM area. Uh, what what was it that said to you? This is for me, and not just something I'm interested in, but something yeah. I can do and achieve at. Right, so you know, I'm kind of practicing what I preach. I was really good at math and science, but could have cared less. <laughs> was not interested in engineering or computers yeah. or any of that. Yeah. Um, and then I got into one of these programs that was literally designed to change young ladies' attitudes about uh, science. I got in there a little bit later, but mostly I went into the program because it was competitive yeah. and I like to compete and I thought I could you know, get a nice certificate yeah. so I could go to college and do something else that girls do, yeah. but the program worked, yeah. um, and uh, I saw that I could actually do things with it, and that's how I picked biomedical engineering. That, that really is, yeah. and that really is key. That one experience, that one opportunity. Mm -hmm. My, you know, my daughter just four weeks ago, yeah. I, I asked her. I said, "You play these video games. Do you want to know how they work?" And she said, "No." Uh, right. But someone in school, uh, one of the in, one of the teachers in school, showed her how to do this, and now you know she's getting up at. Uh, six o'clock in the morning right. to do it before school because she's so excited by it. It yeah. really is just about lighting that that interest in the right way. Yeah. It's about lighting it in the right way and then also can I say we just keep it a little bit real, right? That fire has got to burn bright enough to get you through the darkness of whatever. Yeah. You're still going to run into some bias. You're still going to run into yeah. I'm the only girl in the class. <laughs> but if it means that much to you, you're going to power through. How, how common was that for you? That, that you found yourself uh, alone uh, in terms of your gender, in terms of your race yeah. uh, as you were doing this? Very common. Uh, so I did my undergraduate work at uh, Duke University and then my graduate work at uh, Johns Hopkins. Yeah, so yes, right. very often. Two very elite institutions, not very diverse. Absolutely. <laughs> As a matter of fact, for my graduate work, I was almost a triple minority because I was American. <laughs> right? right? There's a lot of foreign On students. On the engineering yeah. side. And that said, I want to be clear, though, that that means that my mentors were men right. who did a very good job, right? And so, so they believed in me, uh, and they encouraged me. And I did, I did get some discouragement and discouraging words from, from different places, but I think as long as we have a balance yeah. sort of, of, of those things, and so that's why the program, of course, uh, means a lot to me personally, but I'm... Um, I'm a scientist, so I also have data that suggests that this will work that it'll really, work. really well. Yeah. Yes. All right, so it starts in January. How mm -hmm. can parents get their kids involved? Absolutely. So uh, we're definitely starting it uh, early, 2016, and there's going to be a website, and it will go live. So we're going to have uh, ways to come, different programs, uh, more overnights, more coding classes, more robot building classes. You can sign up at any time. We'll be showing folks the logo. It's a fantastic logo. Yeah. It's almost as cool <laughs> as the name. Uh, but we're also working with different groups in the city, uh, like the Girl Scouts and uh, DAPSEP and all of these different organizations that already work with girls sure. or already work with STEM. So we really want to try to be a hub, um, a way that folks who are interested in supporting girls in this work can have a partner in that. And that's yeah. really what we're trying to do. Yeah, and the schools, of course, are probably a Absolutely. big part of that. I know you guys bring lots of school kids we do. into the Science Center. Anyway. We do. And one of the things we're going to be measuring, our research partner is Wayne State. Um, we're going to be measuring when we set up this girl-friendly, girl invitation kind of environment, do our young ladies also go into the co-ed programs right. more often, right? Yeah. Because now they're just 
drinking the Kool-Aid and they want to be a part of that. And so schools are great for that, right? And so we do have a lot of uh, schools coming in from all over Southeast Michigan. And so they're going to be a part of the program as well. Okay. Uh, great program. Thank you. And thanks very much for sharing it thanks with us. Thanks for having me.